Hey guys, how's it going? This is Helpful Lockpicker here, and welcome back to my Lockpicking Homeschool series. In the video that we have today, we're going to investigate some strategies on proper placements of spool pens. As you can see, I have all of these spool pens placed at different levels, and what we're going to do is go over some considerations to try to make our locks much more effective. More information is coming up on this topic in just a second. Please stay tuned. When you're first getting started with trying to optimize your spool pin placement, the first thing you're going to want to take in consideration is going to be the key bidding. One rule that seems to stand true is you want to try to put a spool pin over a shorter key pin and put a standard pin or a serrated pin over the longer ones. When you take a look at this key here, it's going to be an 87227, which is going to be a long key pin, long key pin, short key pin, short key pin, and long key pin. I also added a sixth key pin, which is going to be a number four, just because this is a six pin plug and it's gonna help us demonstrate this much better. So when we take a look at the lock, what we're gonna see is in position number one, this is going to be an eight size key pin, which is gonna be the longest one that you can find in an American lock. Here's an example of a number eight right here. So when you remove the spool, you're gonna see how the key pin is going to sit at rest. As you can tell, it is sitting almost at the very top of the plug here, and that is giving the spool pin very little room to be able to interact and become effective. Essentially what is happening with the spool pin when it is sitting over a key pin that is this long is that the thicker diameter of the spool is the only part that's coming into play. What is going to happen is this spool pin is only going to act like a standard pen and it is not actually going to be fully utilized. When we come down to position three and four, we can see that this is going to be a number two key pen, which is one of the shorter sizes of an American lock. And you can see one right here. It is so short, it doesn't even have the serrations on it. So when the spool pen sits like this, it's going to first start off interacting like a standard pen. And then when you lift it up, you're going to get into the thinner diameter of the spool pen. And then you're going to start to get that false set. And then once you lift up the pen past the thinner part and you get back to the thicker part, you're going to get that classic counter rotation. So when you use a key pen this short, you're going to get the spool pen to interact all throughout its three stages, which makes it a very effective pen. And then when you go all the way back in the chamber number six here, you can see that it is interacting immediately with just the inner diameter, and then that is going to give you that false set followed by counter rotation. My personal practice is I prefer to put the spool pens over the ones that are going to immediately interact with just the inner diameter, but there is no problem with doing it over the super short ones where you're going to get through all the three stages. But what I'm trying to show you right now is just a really great visualization of what the lock looks like in rest. So as you can easily tell over these longer key pens, you can see that in positions one, two, and five, these are not going to be effective at all because the pens are just going to be sitting very much at the top of the lock and they are not going to ever come into play. So when I was pinning up this lock, what I would probably consider doing is I'd put a serrated pen over all of these chambers here, or you could even put in a standard pen. The one thing that you wanna to try to avoid when you're doing spool pens is trying to just put all spool pens in because you don't want your lock to get into a false set straight from the beginning. But when you are trying to optimize your spool pin placement, always take into consideration the key bidding, which will correlate with the key pin size. You want to try to get them into a position where they're over a key pin that is short enough for it to at minimal interact with the inner diameter of the spool pin. It will be your own preference on if you want to have one that is so short that it will sit down this far, but it is going to work just as well. But either way, guys, this has just been a really quick overview on what spool pens look like and how they sit at rest and how you can better place them. One thing you always want to take in consideration is 
Many law companies do not take this into their own consideration. A lot of the pens are just penned at random or they're just at a standard position and they are not often optimized. I find this in American locks all the time and it is always worth just trying to take your locks apart and making them as effective as possible. But thank you guys so much for checking out this week's Lock Picking Homeschool. This is such a really fun series to really help people try to start at a beginner level and start to grow as an intermediate level and just be a really great resource for the community. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video and I hope you all have a great day and just thank you so much for checking this out.